All right, it's a very beautiful Friday morning and indeed our pleasure to welcome you aboard News Home. I am Shu Uyidiji. And I am David Ababudike. It's a beautiful Friday morning. Yes, the weather is just right to talk business, the weather wow. is just right to do business, the weather is just right to interact, the weather is just right to be positive. Yes, thank you for choosing uh, to stay with us on this program. A beautiful day. Yes, it's our our Friday edition of the show, and uh, you all know what that is. Uh, when it's a Friday, it's more or less your day. It is the day where you call in and make all your concerns and contributions on, on subject matters that will be reeled out uh, to you. So much has happened all through the week. Uh, we've had fantastic conversations all through the week. And uh, so uh, we'll let you into exactly what uh, our focus will be on the show today. Absolutely. And talking about focus, get say because we'll be talking about the hijab wearing in schools, uh, taking Kwara State as the case study because of the issues that's been happening since February the 18th. We'll give you an update. I'm sure that you can't wait to get to hear that. We also want to hear your voice as to what you think with how the, uh, the let me say the Christian Association there, the Muslim Association and the government of Kwara State has been able to uh, handle that. However, it also cuts across because uh, we want to know how, uh, where tolerance you know, comes in, where uh, the, the issues that have been sorted out, even since 1974, according to research, uh, has pointed out. And how can we, in the midst of all of this, find peace? Extremely very key. Yeah. It's, very, it's very key uh, that in the midst of this, we should be able to find um, a win-win um, solution to the many challenges. So on the show yesterday, I, I did I did say, uh, you know, we all, we all know that um, Nigerians are most divided when it comes to issues around um, politics, party, uh, and religion, and that has been a tool uh, for the political class to divide. Uh, Nigeria. So it's about time, uh, like they say in the local palace, we give ourselves brain. You know, it's about time we become sensitive to all of this. Don't fall victims to uh, these tricks and caprices or uh, uh, intrigues of um, some class of individuals that would use politics and would use um, religion as a tool uh, to divide us. We are one united Nigeria. Aside, in spite of religion, uh, color, uh, 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 political affiliations, and all of that, we are indeed one Nigeria. Yeah. That's absolutely true. Of course, we'll take a uh, first break in a very short while, then we'll bring in focus, however, let's uh, set your mind to what we're talking about this week, which is this Friday, which is open day. And we're taking a look at fuel pricing, which has been on the news. The governor's uh, Forum met on Thursday to decide what happens. Remember that the Minister uh, for Employment, Labour and Employment, Chris Ngege, did mention on Sunday that uh, they had met with Labour and as well, uh, all they have to wait to do now is listen to what the governors had to say. Many people had questions what should gov governors be talking about when it comes to uh, pricing of, of fuel in the country? But there must be more to that, which we sh wish to unravel. We'll also be taking a look at um, the refineries in the country, the nationwide vaccination, rising inflation. Uh, we'll be taking a look at that. And um, we can't afford to miss it today. And we also want to hear from you uh, with regards to your thoughts in all of these. Yes, interesting conversation we'll be having today. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure uh, it was a bit um, disturbing yesterday. Though, of all the all the 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 headlines that we read on the pit from the papers yesterday, uh, the focus of the viewers yesterday was basically around the religious story, which was about the hijab wearing the hijab issue. Man. So you see, I am a bit concerned. I really don't think we should, um, you know, pay too much attention to to, to religion in, in Nigeria. We have more pressing issues uh, than religion uh, to be the focus. Yes, uh, uh, let's look at what the quote for the day is before we let you go up the segment. A uh, quote for the day reads. Uh, it says, science without religion is lame. Religion without science is blind. That's coming from Albert Einstein. Science without religion is lame. Religion without science is blind. Which is worst, lame, blind? I think they are both uh, terrible <laughs> situations that anyone could find them. You don't want to find, find yourself in yes, uh, yes. uh, yeah. either of these situations. However, it's very important to, to, to appreciate that science is science. Science is the world. Religion is life. Uh, one of the reasons why we have some level of sanity, especially in this part of the world, I'm talking about Africa and West Africa to be precise, and let me pinpoint Nigeria, 
is because of uh, the fact that people regard us to be religious. Uh, this is the part of the world where many, many people don't find it necessary to go see their psychologist because they'll be like, okay, I'm not mad. That's just, <laughs> that's the street way of thinking about it. But when you see people who are very depressed, who are worried, those that don't even know what's happening to them, go into mosques and they say the prayers, or uh, even they observe the, the five prayers of the day, they, they feel lighter in the, in, the, in the spirit. And that's why you see people going to church and you keep asking, why can't you pray in the corners of your room? There is, for a lot of people, this kind of calmness that comes away when you go into the place of worship and you know, uh, worship your creator. But science is key. In fact, in some parts of the world, some religions will say God is first science himself. You know, he, he has everything, he knows everything. And so and some would say that he stopped in the, at a particular place and gave us brain so that we can think and take it further. So it means that these two are very key. They, can, one, they have to work together to give us a kind of society that will, will make us stand out and be the, uh, the best productive society that we can. So the two should go, let, let me use the street balance, Paris Passu. Yes. <laughs> it should go side, side, side by side, side, yeah, by side, side, by to side. make things really work. Yeah, very, very, very important. But before we go, let's, um, let me bring you a few uh, interesting news uh, that hit the airwaves yesterday. Yes, we are told that um, six Tokano jets uh, will uh, you know, arrive in Nigeria sometime in June. I'm uh, sure that, could, that should sound like good news in the fight against um, insurgency, banditry, uh, just name it. Yes, the canals are coming in. It's been um, long and waiting. We've been waiting for these jets for the last um, maybe two or three or even four years. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it was during uh, uh, the Jonathan administration that those jets were, were ordered. Uh, but then we are, so. we're excited the jets are are going to be here in a couple of months. Yeah. Yes, June, July, according to uh, the federal government, we do hope and pray that when they come, they'll be able to, uh, you know, ease, if possible, just end insurgency in the country. Uh, military hardware, as we've heard, you know, experts talk about uh, the, that on this program, different times are very key. However, intelligence also very important. Uh, we did hear those on Thursday that uh, some kind of efforts by bandits to hit some towns were, you know, thwarted because people provided information. Military hardware, we need that, and that actually has put us on the list of uh, countries that, you know, military, uh, you know, uh, is ready, that we have the capacity, improved capacity when it comes to uh, military hardware, so to speak, so very important. Also, one of the top news yesterday was uh, uh, the uh, fact that a grant of $890 million uh, that starts to tackle HIV, AIDS uh, and tuberculosis was uh, launched by President Mahmoud Buhari, and uh, it means that we should see the health sector improving uh, in, in very soon. Uh, one very important thing that we have to pick out of that was the fact that the President did direct the Minister of Health uh, to bring accountability to the table. He warned of any form of corruption because he said, my eyes are on you. I'm going to be following you because my government you know, is uh, premised on anti-corruption. So uh, let's see how these monies would be uh, are dispersed and towards what? Tuberculosis, HIV AIDS. Let's see how it goes. Yes, transparency and accountability have been a major issue even for this government. So uh, I really hope that we have structures, that this government have structures uh, in place. They have modalities uh, to track uh, spendings, to track um, uh, contract, contracts and the rest of them. We really hope that uh, there are, there are uh, uh, you know, uh, strong structures uh, that would ensure uh, accountability in government spending. We really, really hope so. And so we are also watching, we are following uh, uh, the disbursement of the grants on HIV and AIDS, even though uh, uh, very little has been said around um, HIV in recent times. Uh, it has all been, all, it's been all about COVID-19 COVID yeah. and the rest of them, even in tuberculosis. Uh, not much has been said about, about that ailment, although, yes, uh, part of the, 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 the symptoms of um, of COVID is uh, when you cough, when you cough uh, too frequently, uh, they begin to wonder, is it tuberculosis or is it um, uh, COVID-19? But then, uh, good news, so we really hope that um, these monies will be well dispersed and um, well utilized. Yes, uh, I think it's about time we take that break. When we come back, we'll be going straight into our focus for the day and after which it will be the newspaper uh, front page review. So stay with us.
you can now stream Silverbird News 24 live on mobile app. All you need to do is to download Silverbird News 24 app from Google Play Store on your Android devices and App Store or on your Apple devices. Tap the live button at the bottom bar to watch us live 24 7. You can enjoy all our news programs, including PJ News and Program. Silverbird News 24. The news never stops. Breaking news stories, insightful documentaries, news reports from around the globe, and original news content now available 24 hours daily on Star Times Channel 109. Stream live on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash Silverbird N24 Live. Follow on Facebook at Silverbird News 24, on Twitter at Silverbird N24, and on Instagram at Silverbird N24. Silverbird News 24, the news never stops. Once again, it is our pleasure to welcome you aboard News Hub on Silverbird News 24 and Silverbird Television. This morning, our focus on, uh, as, uh, on Silverbird News 24 is on hijab wearing in schools. If you've been paying attention since February the 18th, 2021, it, it started as if it was something new. But if you go back in time to 1974, when there was a, a, a grant, you know, uh, aid, grant aid given to secondary schools, especially schools abroad across the country. So mission schools, such as brought them back to government so that there's been a partnership between the mission schools and governments in funding such schools. However, hijab wearing, especially in, the, in some parts of the country, let's say the North Central, uh, which really houses a lot of Christians and Muslims alike, has always been an issue. It started out in 2012, but we want to see how it has been uh, this year, 2021, uh, where it's a renewed call for students who are Muslims that want to attend missionary schools, not to wear hijab. One of the arguments is that you can't go attend uh, Muslim schools without wearing hijab. So if you want to come to Christian schools, we don't wear hijab. So you have a choice to either want to attend our schools and obey all our rules or go to other schools because there are other schools for you. Well, how much of tolerance will that be where you want to take a look at that? How much of peace and living in harmony that we need to do without bringing it to the country? Join us on the show this morning to shed more light and perhaps dissect uh, the goings on in a law in Kwara State Capital about this is the editor of Silver Bird News 24, Wally Busari. Wally, once again, nice to have you in this up. Good morning, Shea. Good, hmm. morning, Good morning, David. Good morning, Wally. Yeah. So, uh, Shea, Shea had actually just uh, given us a background to the conversation, um, hijab wearing. Uh, what happened in um, Ilori uh, really wasn't palatable. Like I did ask you uh, when the, before the lights came on. Uh, what the constitution you know did say about um, uh, free uh, uh, religion uh, uh, is, is there a position in the constitution that talks about um, hijab wearing or no hijab wearing or exactly uh, how does religion how does the constitution you know uh, take a look at the, the concerns around religion in nigeria well i'm not very particular i'm not too sure that um, that area is spelled out in the constitution but be as that may be, we have, Nigeria is not, doesn't have any state religion and the constitution guarantees rights of 
religion, freedom of religion, freedom of association. So I believe that if a constitution allows you to practice a religion, then every dictate of that religion is a shrine in it. So you are free to practice in accordance to the dictates of your religion. So I think it's a right, it's guaranteed under the constitution. Uh, Sideways. Well, let, let's, say, let's take a look at this. Uh, for instance, uh, there is a part here where uh, it says that um, government nonetheless came in to promulgate the Quasi Education Law of 1974 for the state. Uh, the law has since been reviewed uh, a lot of times. The extent of the existing law on this point is the Quasi State Education Law of 2006. It is made up of 48, that's 48 sections. And um, what the writer of this article finds intriguing, however, is provisions as in sections 2, 20, subsection 1, AV 22, and it goes on and that, which um, says, that, among other things, that private institutions, schools inclusive, defines proprietor. The section also defines voluntary agencies. Before a school can be said to be a private school, certain conditions must be fulfilled in line with the requirements of government. Now, coming back to where the hijab uh, issues are, are spelt out. The government of the state now has the right because they took it to court. They actually went to court over these hijab issues and the, the, the court did rule in favor of the state to say the state says any student, any Muslim girl who wants to wear a hijab has the right under the law of the state to go ahead. So for Quara State, they created a law to support every school girl who's a Muslim and wants to wear a hijab to be free to attend any school of our choosing and dress the way that she wants to dress. That's the argument the Kwara State government is putting forward. Fine. It's, they, they have the law to back it up. They also have court pronouncement to back it up. But I want to add, even in, in some cases, what we are court is going now is we are not really going to advance the nature of litigation again. In fact, some, there are some judges who allow you to go and settle or to exploit other alternative dispute resolution. Yeah. And I want to believe that the current state government should have known the essence of the, 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 the seriousness of religion in Nigeria. And that Nigeria, either tribe, ethnicity and religion is a very sensitive matter that yeah. needs to be handled with caution. I recollect vividly International Christ School in Ibadan, I mean International uh, School in Ibadan, that of UI, they have the issue of hijab too and it has not degenerated to this level. Mm. They also have it in Lagos. They also had it in Ogun State. And yeah. people, those stakeholders are trying to see ways of setting it amicably. So I don't think this is the right time for... It, they, there was a time people used to... When there is crisis, even this fight against terrorism, they asked government to apply carrot and stick approach. Yeah. So it's not every time you don't seem to believe, to behave in such a way that people will see you teeting to a particular side. Be as I may be, uh, when government is taking over the schools, like it said in 1974, yeah. there are certain things that should have been taken into consideration. There are Christian schools and there are Muslim schools. When we were growing up, we have a Saradin school, we have uh, CSC grammar school. I went to CSC grammar school in Ibadan. And all of us have known the rules in this school before we go there. So I know that when you are going to this particular there are certain things that you'll be you exposed to, to. there are certain things you'll be expected to do. And I watched a viral video of that clash in, in Lauren. I don't know whether it's clearly the seen or not. Baptist or the one at Baptist or the one College? The, the Baptist. The Baptist. Baptist. So, okay. I think I was seeing the church, yeah. which means that that school might have been located very close to a particular church. And that's why that there are certain things we should not do that will provoke the sensitivity of the that people going true. to that church. So if we have a school very close to a church, there are certain things we know that the church will tolerate and the church will not tolerate. For instance, there's a house and a compound around my area. They just fenced it. You don't pass through that. You, these are, you can pass through it, but you don't wear shoes. Oh. You can pass through that particular it's a compound. Holy ground. It's a holy you have ground. to pull you your you shoes before you pass. Shoes. Oh, okay. So anytime, you, before you have a choice, that, that is a short course. And there's not a longer course, it's a longer route. So if you think you want to pass to that place, you can't go there and be claiming that um, uh, you have freedom of movement. I now move through that place without wearing with your shoe on. Mm. So like uh, Justice Oputa said something some times ago when we had this Oputa panel, is that the problem in Nigeria that we don't plan for the future? 
When the government took over this school and they had plan of returning it, that's anything that should have been taken into consideration. Is the right for Muslim students to wear hijab? Fine. Nobody disputing that. Then how do you manage the situation? How do you manage the return of this school so that it will not offend the sensibility of others? You say the government is still claiming that when they return it, that's okay because they were still giving grants. Grants, yes. Then what was the status quo before this incident? I read uh, the chief press secretary response to it, Rafael Jakai. He said this actually, the incident was caused by one Okada man that took a girl to school and the girl wanted to remove her hijab and the man said, no, you will not, you will not remove it. You have put it on your know, right. So this thing for me is going to be hard, more, I'm more in a more peaceful way. And I'm very happy with the response from one of the Islamic group there that they said those who were actually engaged in that fight were not representing them. Mm. Okay. So we should, this is not the time for us to be fighting over religion. We have so many problems at hand than religious. I would have been very happy if these people fight because they were currently they were protesting the bad, bad building condition of education in Nigeria, not because of hijab. You should not wear it, I'm not wear it. What's wrong with us in this country? These are the things we should have gone to the drawing table. The government now, government seems to be showing too much partiality in this issue. Mm. If I may use that word. Now, the message from the test come board yesterday said people, the teacher must resume or they face action. You know there is a crisis that, that can lead to that the has the Serious breakdown of law and other. I'm insisting that people should resume that. You shut that school, that school down about 10 three or four weeks ago, I did not put any measure in place to dialogue with stakeholders so that we come to amicable settlement. And now it's what after we had clashes. That's why you're not insisting that people should go back to school. Government should, the, the state government should be able to sit down, come to conclusion that I am for everybody. It's not just for, don't, the, the, don't let other parties see you as taking side in this matter. It's isn't a there, matter that should be is handled. It, isn't with there a possibility of, um, legal practitioners challenging that that law in the law in, in, in Quara State because it is not um, a holistic uh, law. It yes. is not completely uh, people-friendly law. Because even in Quara State, Ilora, you have non-Muslims. You have non-Muslims. So they also have a right uh, to their religion. They also have a right to practice their... Where your religion ends is where another one... Where yeah, your right, right ends says, is where another one right starts. The, the, the government is relying on the fact that the matter got to their peacock and the God judgment in their favour. Government is doing it as if it is me against them. It shouldn't be. Government should show more neutrality in this matter. Yeah. Even the fact that the matter is in court, the matter can be going in court. Mm. Why dialogue is also going another round too. The most important thing is coming to communicable settlement over this matter. So for me, I'm reading the body language of the state government. I was I'm not that so impressed about it. Is it taking sight for me? That's why, my Wally, own why don't you take a look at where the uh, the Christian part, uh, the the biggest argument actually is that there is a crisis in the northern part of the country. And then when you have female uh, students wear hijab, God forbid if there's going to be an attack on the school, uh, and if, for instance, the other people want to side on the, uh, the, the Muslims, so to speak, it's easy for you to identify Muslims and set them aside and make, that will make the, the Christian students vulnerable to attacks. That's one of their arguments, if you ask me. And also, Talking about the government taking into consideration all the things that will happen in future, I can also see here that the subsection 30, uh, the one there says, no person shall be refused admission. That is one of the things. In fact, I will, the argument of the government is actually premised on this particular one. No person shall be refused admission as a pupil or prevented from attending as a pupil at an institution or an institution on account of his religious persuasion. So which goes ahead? And let me tell you something. I started my secondary school at CNS College, Sabo Kenny Lori. Then we had our principal, Late Park Kitola, is, is, is going to be with the Lord now. And of course, we are, our uniform then white and green. And we had Muslims that didn't adorn any kind of hijab then. And we were all together. There wasn't anything. So I attended that school, that particular school, without citing anyone wearing hijab, in spite of the fact that Ilori is, you have more Muslims that live there 
than any other person. God could be where we lived then. We had, my dad is a pastor. We had a church. We had uh, two or three mosques around. And we were all together. We lived in harmony. So it goes to say that, well, things change. I think we, we're moving together in such a way that some would say there should be tolerance. That wearing the hijab, that's the argument of some people, does not make you less, you know, uh, ha have the, having the, the yeah. less mm -hmm. rights to Religious, be in any school yeah. of your choosing. Yeah. So how do we now uh, strike a balance between uh, tolerance, religious uh, activities, and what the government says? So, uh, Wally, one moment, let's let our people know that they can join in the conversation, and let's just, uh, let's, let, let peace be the one at the back of our mind while we talk on the show today. Wally. Now, I want to start with the issue of attack or school. This time around, we discovered that Bandit does not even accept, discriminate between religion. So they just carry kidnap. everybody go. They just carry everybody. <laughs> okay. So for me, the law, we say that nobody should be discriminated upon the basis of religion from going to a particular school. Is that area right there? The school was set up by missionaries and you are returning to them. I think what you'll have, government should have, instead of banking on the fact that because we are not giving you grants, then it we can't become do a public school. It's so, I, I, for me, I don't really buy that idea. There's a lot of things that should have been taken into consideration when they were returning to school. Hmm. It's either we are giving you this school fully, you become the owner, and you'll be able to regulate it. Because most of the argument is that because we are Muslim, because we are mission school, there are certain things we don't allow in our school for, for moral sake, in order to bring these people up in the way we believe is right. For it can happen in other Muslim schools too. You don't expect me to go to I am sorry in secondary school. I know. And they now my said there's now say, okay, it's time for us to recite Quran and I'll tell them no, I'm a Christian, I won't do it. When you, know where, when you know where you are. I, before, I, before I apply for that school, you might know what is going to happen there. Before we apply for secondary school, when we don't need that time, we knew uh, we have some schools that we don't want to go to. Because that's how they do that that we Religious don't like. Religious affiliations. It's the same thing even applying to secular job. I was supposed to go to one particular company and they told me that's how they do every money. I'm not comfortable with it. So I didn't so bother. Even to when work. I had offer to go there, I just didn't know I'm not comfortable with this. Okay. So it's a different bargain for me to now go and now start claiming rights when I got to the place. Okay. Well, well the, the calls are already coming in. Uh, we have Ola Tunde calling from Enugu. Good morning, Tunde. Yeah, my name is Ola Tunde. I'm calling from Enugu. Good morning. I'm a Muslim. Yeah, good morning. I'm a Muslim. I'm from Kuala State. Hello. Go ahead. Go ahead. We can hear you. Okay. I'm a Muslim. My name is Ola Tunde. I'm calling from Enugu. I'm a Muslim from Kuala State. In my own opinion, uh, the Kuala State government is not trying to my own view. We have Muslim school. Likewise, we have Christian school. So any Muslim who wanted to use his job should go to the Muslim schools. Allow the Christian to participate their own religion the way it's supposed to be. That is my own little contribution. So that will allow the kids to reign. Any Muslim who wants to use his job should go to the Muslim school. Why any Christian, I mean, uh, uh, Christian should just allow them to at least to use their own school as their work. So that is our only two contribution. God bless Nigeria. God bless us all, Tunde. Thank you for that contribution. So you, you see, it, uh, I mean, for Tunde, it, it's about it's about decision, Choice. choices, choices we make, and for peace to reign. So but I then there is a there is a super uh, a super a, a superior argument right now from government. So where do the, we the, go? The from argument there? is not cast in stone. We, what that have said, the way government is portrayed is like government has an ambition. Government should come out clearly and let everybody know whether you're a Muslim, a Christian, or a traditional worshipper, I am for you. But if you look at, for instance, look at what the uh, Tesco bus wrote, look at what the CPS wrote, it's like, although the CPS also believe that it's a very dangerous decision for them to make, but it will have make it less cumbersome for themselves. And, and uh, you know, the, the part where I still want all of us to take a look at it, the intentions of the government, which possibly, I'm not speaking for the government, is to unite everyone, regardless of your religion. Because I remember even learning that there were a lot of religious issues. There were times that churches were burnt down. There were times that there were attacks here and there. Let's speak with Olumba from uh, uh, Olu. Good morning, Olumba. 
Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Please turn on the volume of your TV, please. Yeah. You are, you are very, you know, regular caller, so you know. Yeah, 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 that's true. That's, uh, well, um, I, I, I believe that the crisis is in a lorry is uncalled for. It is not by force to enroll one's work in, in any school, especially when it's brothers on faith. And be sure that no one in rural roads in any mission school without rules and regulations gives first out to the person first. And here we are talking about a mission school called Baptist High School. It then becomes a matter of choice. If you are Muslim and you enroll your work in a Christian school, please be ready to adjust to their doctrine and their code. Same applies when a Christian decides to enroll his or her work in a Muslim educational facility. If it no longer says that when you go to Rome, you behave like a Roman. Freedom of association is guaranteed in our constitution. It is not by compulsion for a Muslim to enroll his child in a mission school, a Christian school. This is my position. Let us have peace. If you find your lumber from all over. Okay. Aluba, thank you for that, for that um, contribution. Uh, I think um, all our callers are told they are toying a particular path, which is a, for me is a path of uh, peace and, and common sense. I think government has a responsibility to resolve peace in that state because what they are having now is volatile. Is, they are sitting on the gunpowder. You know, just, just it's not where I do. Yeah. Elonie, as for instance, the, 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 what, the aftermath will be too much for the state government to handle. So for me, dialogue should be the way out now. Instead of brandishing the court judgment, we get the power, mm -hmm. we get the right to do whatever. If it's about funding, they can discuss with this school. Fine. If for us to be able to continue to fund you, this is what we want to do. Okay. Or in the alternative, will you, yeah. will you continue to fund yourself oh. and subject yourself to the rules, professional rules and regulation of education? Right. Uh, well, we have another caller. We have Garba from Beno State. Garba, good morning. Good morning, Garba. Good morning. You see, my take on this issue is one. We need to have a tolerance within our world. Secondly, I will ask you. Garba. I they exist in all this way. Can you, can you hear me now? I think the school has exist in all this way. Why we don't have this problem now? That's the question I'm asking. If the school has been existing and they have been going to the school all this way, why we don't have the problem now? Therefore, mean there are some people that are mischief of all this nonsense. How many years the school have been existing? And they have been kind of going there without any issue till now. We have to ask ourselves a question. There are some individuals that are trying to bring religion issues before us. If not like that, why would this one thing not happen? Till now, mm. that's the question that I ask myself. Mm. Hey, my God, we have, uh, we have a kind of missionary school. We don't have that kind of problem. I'm okay, going to Gamba, thank you so much for your submission. I, I mean, you, your, your point is made at this point in time. I want to thank you all for being part of this segment of the show. Wale, I mean, people keep talking about this. The conversation continues on our social media handles. Remember that you join us uh, to uh, bear your view as well. Who knows? Maybe government may just see what's going on there. We can continue to do what we have to do which is to live in peace and harmony as the people. We take a very short break off the focus, okay? All right, all right, so there's no break. We just roll over to the newspaper review segment yeah. of News Hub today. All right, let's begin with the Niger News Direct where the biggest story is captioned, experts kick as excess crude accounts drops to $72.41 million BGF, CPC, monitor COVID-19 vaccine distribution. You can get the details of the story on page 4 of the paper. And about the nameplate, COVID-19, Galaxy, okay, backbone, receives Nigerian news direct. That's a story about the company. And the idea is he's a 60 billionaire illicit drugs in two months. You can get other stories inside the paper. EU confirms Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine is safe you can get that on page seven and uh, read for my additional column back page there i'm sure that some things will happen when you read that page this morning that's the cover page of the nigerian news direct today 
Uh, our next stop will be the, 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 the Daily Times. Daily Times, a major story there. NDLEA seizes 60 billion Naira illicit drugs. Uh, sad one there for the nation's economy. And I'll tell you why it is a sad one uh, shortly. And uh, just below the picture of the day there, court orders... Uh, Court order, rather, and court um, bars EFCC from arresting uh, Ozekome for criticizing Magu. Forgery. Court of Appeal dismisses APC's certificate forgery suit against Obasaki. An arms scandal. PDP flays FG, APC, alleges fresh $2.5 billion arms scandal. Hmm. Okay, um, let's go above the market. What do we have? Uh, border closure failed to stop illegal inflow of arms, uh, Buari uh, laments. A sad narrative there from our president. And that's about it on the front page of the Daily Times. From the Daily Times, let's see the front page of the Nigerian Tribune on Friday. The biggest story here is on health. COVID-19, AstraZeneca safe for use. EU, WHO declare. And uh, the riders here, PTF engages ICPC to ensure vaccine accountability. And Lagos vaccinates 12,720 people in 48 hours. And that's the story you can find on page two as it continues of the Nigerian Tribune today. And above the name plate, as Nigerians sink deeper in Global Mystery Index, it's a news analysis which you can read up when you turn to page 3-5, a bigger pardon, of the Nigerian Tribune today. And six Super Tucano jets to arrive in July. There's a precedence, it says. You can get that on page 3. Uh, you find uh, FBI lists Nigeria among top 20 countries that lost $44.2 billion to cyber fraud in the year 2020. Details on page 30. Gunmen kill naval officers, policemen in a number at page 29. Mother, four kids, die in a law inferno. That's a very pathetic one. And 1.5 billion naira to revive Port Harcourt refinery. Suspicious, says Atiku. And two years after APC, uh, PDP, others snub INEX demand for audited report of election process. Electoral acts will be applied, that's according to INEC. And then you find this picture story that shows the controller, Nigerian Customs Service, in charge of Adamawa and Taraba State, Mr. Isha Ganiu. Inspector Jerry Kans of Petrol ceased by the command on the Nigeria Cameroon border in Yola on Thursday. All right, so that's the cover page of the Nigerian Tribune today. Our next stop will be the Punch newspaper. A major headline Doctors threaten strike, say, say government not paying dead members insurance. The Punch newspaper. Um, a few writers there. Families of our members killed by COVID 19 received nothing that's coming from the association uh, we lost 17 of our members to covid 19 1600 infected say resident doctors doctors plan indefinite strike march 31 Kano vaccination suffers uh, setback that's uh, the major story on the front page of the the punch newspaper above the master the senate summons augf over on audited uh, immigration account, immigration's account. And the CBN defends Naira with uh, $5.62 billion in three months. Throwing 2023 presidency open uh, the speakable on, uh, on, on unconscionable, okay, unconscionable on is it tells PDP. And then uh, at last, uh, Aisha Buhari returns uh, after six months Six months in Dubai. Okay, let's move on. Below the picture of a day, the hijab um, controversy uh, here. Tescom orders 10 short schools uh, teachers to resume today. And six super Tucano uh, jets arrived July, says presidency. Gunmen killed four naval men, three policemen in Anambra State. Sad one there. And Quara, Quara mother. Four children bound to death, husband hospitalized. And uh, finally, uh, let's look at this. Ex reps leader alleges Mackinde's loyalist threatening to kill her. Um, sad narrative there, sad, sad narrative there on the front page of the Punch um, newspaper.
Yeah. Remember, it's open day. You're free to join us and discuss any of these topics you find fanciful uh, today. Uh, Wally, let's talk about the, uh, the issue of the drop in the uh, account of the excess crude account. We hear this dropped to 72.41 million dollars. Mm. What impact do you think this could have on the nation's economy? Definitely, we are complaining we don't have money, and they have a excess oil account. That's also depleting. <laughs> so, so we have to dip our hands. Yeah, what they have not been able to tell us was it's actually responsible for the depletion. What are they done with it? And that brings me to the uh, argument of um, former Vice President Atiku Abaka yesterday concerning the $1.5 billion he marked for the turnaround maintenance of Portaco refineries. And he quite said Shell sold a particular one in the US for $1.2 billion. And his argument is that that one was even far better than the Portaco refineries. And I begin to wonder if the problem we've been having all along is because even when these refineries were performing optimally, they were not taking care of the local consumption. So what happened? And we have a private individual that's building another refinery they got from the scratch. And we know that most of these machines, most of the equipment in these refineries dated back to years, they might have been obsolete. So what are we still doing? Pumping money there. Year in, day out, we keep doing turn around maintenance, turn around maintenance. But still, we're still not getting any result from this. I was listening to press reports this morning and they like, we made about seven, I mean, between seven billion era in five years, but we lost about seven hundred and something billion era in five years on these refineries. And the fact now still remains that the government said, I have 44 months to deliver this the four beach to the finalists, which in by that 44 months, most of the equipment they will have got even gotten obsolete. The case of refineries in Nigeria is that the case of Ajakuta Rony Sea Mill. Years in, I've been hearing about the Ajakuta Rony Sea. It's what we call Abiku. These two are Abiku, our refineries and Ajakuta Rony Sea. So why don't we, even if we don't, we have a spot, because if we don't have a spot, we won't have a private individual building refinery from the scratch. Why don't we just this money, whooping 1.5 billion to refurbish. Why can't we what initiate about even, even a into, new one? What about even engaging the uh, uh, private sector so that they can work, that the PPP can work and make this, you know. Somebody always says that government has no business doing business. No, they, the, day in day out, we've been able to, they, the government has been able to prove to us that they cannot handle our business. And that's why you see them sending over assets every day, every year. Like this year, uh, uh, the, there was this argument that we're going to sell some assets to fund 2021 budget. I was discussing with my children, and they said, "Okay, fine. If we now sell our assets to fund 2021 budget, what happens in 2022?" <laughs> I can just so, imagine the uh, question. Yeah, you probably sell Nigeria. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but then uh, I'm, I'm looking at the concerns you raised about um, the 1.5 billion. Yes, it's a certain concern. Uh, but then when I read through through the the content of uh, the report from the government. Uh, they are ceding the contract to an Italian company, um, which will be run in phases, I think 12 months, 16 months, and oh, then... 44. Uh, for, yeah, so, so uh, uh, but I'm just, I'm just trying to so, be cautiously optimistic. And that's I'm why I think we'll ask a question. The yeah. question is, was this thing open, to, open tendered? To, to, yeah, exactly. Or is just a backdoor arrangement? Because we didn't hear of it until when it was approved by FEC. I agree with you. And he said we don't have money. Our part of it is the SL crude account that we are depleting day in, day out. And we're still going to pull out $1.5 billion. Uh, uh, talking about the excess crude account that seem to be depleting, you begin to understand uh, uh, the politics or the, the mathematics around um, the price of crude haven't gone up. And then the, on the recoveries that is being paid, even though it's a, it's a new name for that, on the recoveries, the new name for subsidy and all of that. And then, okay, I'll, I'll get back to this. Let's keep with Paul. Uh, uh, Paul, good morning, Paul. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Paul. Uh, I'm sorry to say there is something I want to say about this gap that is coming up now. I, I tend a future on what will happen because if the Muslim pay hijab to school, there will be a time that Christian will start to put an a tie to school. So right now, 
it will be a time that they will not even allow a Christian teacher to teach a Muslim. When the Muslim teacher to teach a Christian. So this very bomb now that you people are planning, that the governor is planning on the ground now, it is yet to explode. But I want that they should stop all these things because of this school, which is supposed not to be. I don't know what to put there, but that, that is my own concern for now. Thank you. All right, Paul. Well, thank you. Thank you for that contribution. So, so back to the, uh, the ISS code account that seems to be dropping. We, we have asked government oftentimes. We know that as we speak, the price of crude has gone up to close to $70. And uh, the benchmark for 2021 is about $40. Or automatically, there is an excess there. So we've been asking, what is government intending to do with the excess of about $24, sometimes $30 that will come, that's coming out of the current price of crude? But then remember, we are buying fuel at uh, a lower price compared to the landing cost of, 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 of fuel. That's so what we're told. That's Absolutely. what we're told. <laughs> All right, well, one moment, guys. Let's be with James calling from Plateau State. James, good morning. Thanks for joining us on News Hub. Hello. Good morning, James. Good morning, please. Good Hello. morning. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for a very good conversation. I'm sorry I'll have to take you back to the controversy going on in Lauren. Mm -hmm. And uh, please, uh, my apologies. I've been trying to reach, reach out. There are fundamental questions I'd like to ask. Will a Christian student be allowed to walk freely to a Muslim school without a job, dressed in the way he or she feels comfortable? I think the uh, Quarry State government needs to answer that question. By the way, I am from a background, Islamic background, I'm a Christian. Now, my parents share both religion. Now, when government gets to a point of getting to interfere with such details, government, I guess, should remember it is government's job to provide job for her citizens. Those schools, whether Muslim schools or Christian schools, complement government's efforts in creating jobs. So they are children really with so much fuse over subsidies given to those schools. All right, James. Thank, Thank you. you for your time and thoughts on the show. So, yeah. uh, Wally. Uh, well, so we're, 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 we're trying to analyze um, probably reasons why we're probably having the excess school account depleted. Okay. Uh, but then, but then it is not coming. It's not coming through. Maybe we need government we, we, to come We need tell more us. information. Yes. To yes. Know what's yes. going yes. on. Exactly. And again, before they give us that information, we said we, that the country is broke. I will keep borrowing money left and right. Mm. We keep having money from bats. And from other sources. So, what happened? Why are we having, why are we depleting the SS good account? When we see, I, I remember sometime last year, the customer was boasting of revenue generation of about 4 trillion naira. Trillion, yeah. So, if you have 4 trillion naira from the custom, we are not talking about MPA, we are talking about VATS. So, what is happening to our money? Can you we really know, say we are broke and we still get money from China, loan from other from banks? Other plans to get more money. Yeah. You know, many Nigerians are just asking me because many people don't like. Um, all right, we have blessing from Edo at this point in time. Blessing, good morning. Thanks for joining us on News Hub. Hello? Blessing, yes, please go ahead. Do I switch off? Yes, you are on live. Please go ahead. This is News Hub. I can switch off. Speak you can to talk, us. please. Speak to yes, us. you are on. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Bless you. We can hear you. Please speak. Oh, if you okay. can see me. Well, I, want to speak. I want to speak about the refinery. In that effort, I want to speak about the refinery. And my, my mind about it is that the government wants to use it to service its people there. It's not servicing the machine. I mean, that's 44 months. Where is this government? Then about, uh, I want to talk about bandits. Those people there, uh, like Gumi can be asked now to go and bring his boys out because he knows about them. Without it, it will not work. 
see the way they are destroying people now is not fair. Those people that are that are in charge that that are be, be talking to them, we should know that they are the people that they are ogre. If they are his boy, those people in the bush now are Gumi's boy. We should tell them to so, <laughs> uh, ask Gumi to bring these people out so that farmers can go to farm. Um, traders can go to market. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, blessing. You. Thank you so much. Ali, you want to react a few seconds before we go for the next set of papers? The issue of banditry that the press is talking about. So it's so sad that up to now, those guys kidnapped, the students kidnapped from a, a college of forestry in Kaduna. Nobody said anything about them again. This is the time for us to. I, I, I was reading the chief of air staff saying, We are going after you, the banditry. What is the banditry that we are coming? Do you need to tell them you are coming? Why don't you just activate your kinetic? Uh, oh. forces and go and get them. And it's operation. <laughs> and thank God they said we're going to get about three to candles very soon. Six. Three, six. six. Fine, let's see how far we can make use of that. But we just hope that it's not going to be the talk talk. We will walk the talk this time around so that right. the country will be safe again. And oh. I want to appeal to the candles, uh, quite the government also to tell the part of peace and see why, how they can dialogue with stakeholders and rest of this so that we don't want to have, we've been having so many crises in the Northeast, we don't want to have another one in Kwara State again because by the time we have it in Kwara, and it's the crisis is governing the nation in its entirety. Yeah, gradually. All right, well, let's look at a few more papers before we, before we round off the segment. Um, the Nation newspaper, a uh, major headline there, talking insecurity, IGP accuses states of non-cooperation. Uh, the writer there, Federal government, only ab un federal government only abnormal approach can end insecurity unless it pushes for traditional rulers' involvement. On the lowest trip there, Obaseki cleared of certificate forgery, get that story on page three, and court uh, uh, OK's uh, Ara Rume for Senate. Okay, Ara Ar Arara Reme for, for, for Senate. Get that story uh, on page four of the Nation newspaper. Above uh, the masthead, uh, yes, security issues in uh, a number of states like we saw in other papers. Now, Massari backs power shift to south in 2023. APC will retain power. Okay. Um, Aisha Buhari back home. External reserves dropped by $523 million in two weeks. Quara to teachers go to classes. And uh, finally, finally, um, border closure failed to stop smuggling of arms, Buhari uh, laments. Sad narrative there. So what so. was the gain of border closure? Because I remember during the time we had this border closure, the president was telling us that fine, we've been able to stop flying small arms and all those kind of things. Now the president is coming out to tell us he didn't stop the inflation, the influx of arms. So what did we gain from the border closure, apart from pain? to the businessmen and for the inflation. All right, now let's see the cover page of The Guardian today. Governors back use of AstraZeneca vaccine, mum on petrol subsidy. And uh, EU WHO say vaccine safe, effective. Kano records low turnout for vaccination. You can get all the details when you turn to page eight of the paper. And uh, still on the cover page of The Guardian today, Libya mercenaries behind security crisis in Sahel region Buhari insists, and the PDP condemns alleged fresh $2.5 billion arms purchase scandal and agitate for all to a nation within ambit of law, YCE cautions. Banditry may not end soon, Wike declares. You can get all the stories inside The Guardian today. In as well, I want to welcome my mama back, Aisha Vardy. <laughs> <laughs> I, so didn't, I, want, I didn't see that coming. Okay, <laughs> go on. <laughs> I, I, I always want our government to be more transparent with us next time. I remember when the Boris Johnson had COVID, even when he was being willed to the try to, to, the, to uh, we saw him, people saw him, we were clapping for him. Other world leaders, when they are going for treatment, he, so even when they are going on vacation, we get to hear that people well, are going where for are you going? Where So are you going? my argument is that president for six months, our first she lady has been out of the she country. She's not an elected office. She's not, but it's being funded by public fund. She's not a private citizen for crying aloud. How would you know that? No, it's, it's, it's everything about first family is from the Nigeria post. Even the cousins of the president, they are living in Asurok. 
So don't we have right to know what is happening there? All our money is being sent. The president wives have been out of the country for about six months. We don't well, know what's happening. That she, the, the, now she's the, back. The daughter got married. Maybe she went for a moon ball. Even the daughter that got married is most of the expensive people from the state. That's, that's, that's still arguable. You are not sure about that because she's married to a very rich guy. Yes. Very rich guy. Let's <laughs> <laughs> shift gears by forward. Next one minute, Wally. Masari one minute, backs yeah. um, power shifts uh, to South in 2023. We should not be talking about power shifts if we're really moving towards democracy. It should be a game of number. Let those politicians work towards getting whatever they want. Even the fact that uh, we have a president in the south, in the west, one from the south, from the west, from the north, does not guarantee development in this region. So what are we talking about? We should stop this and go after marriage. It, it, uh, it determines them filling the boys from the region. That you yeah, want to eat the national cake. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for merits and let the, whoever wants to contest so any particular election. It doesn't bother you whether the president comes what from the north or south. What have I gained from south? having the president from the west for eight years? <laughs> All right, Wale. Wale Busari is editor of Silverberry News 24. Thank you so much for being part of News Up today. Thank you. Good morning. Yeah, Wale, it's good to have you. Yes. We'll take a quick break and we'll come back to the news on the other side. Stay with us. <laughs>